Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys 10 must-know settings for open broadcaster software. So number one is output scaled resolution. If we go up to the file menu and do settings down here, then we can see under video that there is two resolutions listed here. First off is the base canvas resolution. So that's going to be referring to the resolution which OBS is working with in this preview window where you put all of the stuff. But then when you actually output to a file or you output to a stream, the resolution that people are going to be seeing that video file at is the output scaled resolution. So oftentimes I find that OBS will set by default this number to a lower resolution, like 720p, which means that if you were to record OBS with these settings, that your output file would be a reduced resolution from the resolution you probably have your screen and your canvas set to. So if you wanna make sure that you're recording at full resolution, assuming that your computer and your internet connection can handle it, then make sure you change your output scaled resolution to be set equal to your base canvas resolution. Setting number two is to automatically remux your videos to MP4. So in my own recording settings, you can see that I record my videos as MKV. The reason for that is the MKV video files. The reason for that is that while you're recording to an MKV file, if your recording happens to stop abruptly, you don't lose all of the footage. But with MP4, that can happen. However, MP4 tends to have better compatibility with video editors. So you can remux your video file from MKV to mp4 basically to change the file type and convert it now in the file menu you can remux any recording here manually so you just drop in one file and you convert it into another format that obs supports but if we go to file settings and we go down to the advanced tab you can see that under recording there's actually a checkbox for automatically remux to mp4 which means that once your video file is done recording obs will automatically take that file convert it to an mp4 file and stick that copy in the same directory so if you're like me and you're always going to convert to mp4 anyway this is a really useful setting for you guys to use so setting number three along with automatically remuxing your videos as i mentioned before in the recording tab of output you can change your recording format so once again i would recommend you change this away from flv to mkv you can see here that certain formats such as FLV don't support multiple tracks per recording. And in addition to that, FLV doesn't have great video editor compatibility. But if you were to use MP4, you can see the MP4 and move files can end up not recoverable, which is why recording in MKV and then converting it into MP4 is a good idea. So unless you have a good reason not to, make sure you go into output and then change your recording format to MKV, and you can convert that to MP4, whatever format you need later on with the VMUX recording feature. So setting number four is start and stop recording or streaming hotkeys. So in the settings menu, you'll also find hotkey settings. And one of the more important ones I find is to have start recording and stop recording set here. I don't stream all that often, so I don't need it particularly set for starting to stream and stop streaming. But it's a good idea to come in here and set at least one hotkey. So the advantage here is pretty obvious. Anytime I want, I can hit Control Alt R on my keyboard and I can start a recording and stop it without actually having to touch the OBS window. So I can put OBS in the background and just know that anytime I want to start and stop the recording, I just need to hit those hotkeys. So it's just a convenience thing there. Otherwise, without that, then you would need to go into OBS and hit the start recording and start streaming buttons over there. Just make sure that the hotkeys you decide to use are not a combination that you would normally press while you're playing a game. Okay, setting number five, and this is of course in file settings as well. If you go to the advanced tab, there is an option here for stream delay. So this is of course more relevant to people who are going to be streaming on sites like Twitch or YouTube. But if you want to add a stream delay to help prevent people from sniping you if you're playing a competitive game, then this is where you can do it. You can hit enable and set a manual duration for the stream delay. So this duration is going to be how long OBS waits to actually send that data to the server. So if you make an action in the game, then anyone tuning into the stream would see it 20 seconds later. Of course, you can go ahead and increase this value if you want. But if you don't actually care about stream sniping or you're not playing a game at all, then you might not need this setting. But that would be pretty important for anyone who's really serious about gaming. Okay, so number six is your microphone and your desktop audio device. You would find this in file settings and then go into audio. So you can see here the devices for desktop audio and mic auxiliary audio. If I recall, the mic auxiliary audio is set to disabled by default. So to even get your microphone to record at all, you're going to need to come in here and you're going to need to actually pick a setting here. Now default usually works as long as when you are recording with OBS, you have your default recording device set up within Windows or whichever operating system you're using. 
So leaving it at default is convenient if you may want to switch your devices around. So just if sometimes you're recording with a webcam or sometimes you're recording with a USB audio device like a headset or a Blue Yeti microphone. So if you want to make sure it's always the same device, then choose the specific device. If you want to make sure it's always whatever is being set as your current default on your operating system, then set it to default. But you will need to come in here and customize that. Same idea applies to desktop audio. If you want OBS to record the audio, from whatever your default output device is, then leave it as default. But if you want it to be recording the same audio that's being output to a specific audio device, then select that from the drop down menu. So, number seven in the general tab of the settings, there are two streaming related settings that are pretty important here. One is automatically record when streaming. When you have this checked and you either hit the hot key to start streaming or you manually hit the start streaming button, it's automatically going to start recording your output to a file as well. So if you ever mean to take your footage and to bring it into a video editor, this is going to be really important so that you actually have a copy of whatever you were streaming earlier to take into a video editor. So having this checked will mean that you don't really need to keep remembering that when you start streaming, you also need to hit the start recording button. So it'll save you some hassle and make sure that you always keep those video files around on your computer. Also another option that you may want, keep recording when stream stops. So if your stream crashes or you hit the stop streaming button, you may find that that might not actually be the stopping point where, where you wanted to end the video. In some cases, maybe the 10, 20 seconds after that occurs is still something you wanna pick up. So if you want to make sure that OBS won't stop the recording until you're actually 100% sure you want to stop it, then have this checked, especially for those cases when your stream just crashes. So number eight on the stream tab of OBS, you can enable bandwidth test mode once you have connected, once you have connected to Twitch as a service, basically linked your account to Twitch so that you can start and stop streaming. The reason for using bandwidth test is so that you can check your settings and make sure that everything is good before you start broadcasting live on Twitch. Okay, so with bandwidth test mode enabled, if you go ahead and start streaming, um, you'll get this pop-up which says that you're in bandwidth test mode, which means that people aren't going to see what you're doing, but that's actually what we want. So with that setup, you'll be able to see your bitrate output. You'll be able to see your FPS and make sure that everything's going okay. Your CPU is hopefully not too overtaxed. And if you happen to have your bitrate set to a very high number, you may actually find that your actual output bitrate is lower than that number. Um, in this case, I'm using very low settings intentionally, but if you set it to like 10,000 kilobits per second, you may find that with the 35 megabits per second upload that you can only get a bitrate of something like 6,000. So we won't really get too much into the details of how much bitrate you need for which video resolution here. Uh, you can kind of check that stuff online already. This is a good way to know your max upload bitrate. So if you really want to test that, just set your bitrate to something very high. So I'll actually show you guys. Uh, file settings. And then with your output for streaming, we can change the rate control to CBR constant bitrate and set it to something like 10,000 here. Hit apply, hit OK, start streaming. And then you can see in the bottom right hand corner what your max bitrate is pretty much going to be. And that's just based on how good your internet connection is. So using this bandwidth test mode is obviously a really handy way to know what your setup is capable of. Okay, setting number nine, audio filters. So if you want to add some noise reduction to your microphone and reduce some of the background noise, you can do that by clicking on the settings icon for your microphone in the mixer, going to advanced audio properties, going to filters, and then you'll have a blank list of audio filters here. So if you want to add any of the defaults that OBS supports, you could do plus and then noise suppression here. Uh, you can see I have my noise suppression cranked all the way over to the left. Of course, before you go and start recording, make sure that your audio sounds okay. So that'll actually be the number 10 setting we'll talk about here. And if you go online, you can, you can get plugins called Reaper. So if you search Reaper plugins, they're actually available for free as VST audio plugins, which work in programs like OBS and uh, DaVinci Resolve, so that you can basically add in even more audio filters onto your microphone. So the Reaper filter, which would be called Reefer underscore standalone, uh, is another good tool for reducing some of the background noise. But anyway, in general, having some audio filters is a good idea, and that's where you do that. So number 10, to check your audio quality, you're going to want to click on the settings icon for mic again, and then go to advanced audio properties. And from here, you can take your microphone, and you can go to audio monitoring, and change it from monitor off 
to monitor and output. When you do that, you'll be able to hear your microphone audio through your desktop audio device by default. And that's really handy because what you're hearing is the audio with the filters applied. So you can hear the audio exactly how it's going to be going to the output video file when you start recording. So this is probably the best way that you can test your audio before you start recording. Of course, it might be a good idea still to do a test recording to a video file, open that video file up, make sure it looks good and make sure it sounds good too as well. But audio monitoring, really useful setting there. Just make sure that before you start recording, unless you actually want to consistently monitor the audio while you're recording, uh, change it from monitor and output to monitor off, and then you'll be good to go for starting your recording or stream. So that's 10 really useful settings for you guys to know in OBS. I think that knowing about these 10 settings will be very helpful for you guys. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.